Hello and welcome everyone. This is Type V3 with a review of the SH Figure Arts Iron Man Mark 45, the third armor Tony Stark used in Marvel's The Avengers Age of Ultron. The Mark 45 diverges from the traditional movie Iron Man suits and adopts a far more organic aesthetic. Presumed to be inspired by the comic universe's bleeding edge armor, the 45 is slender and the color layout carries curvier lines as opposed to calculated edges. It's an armor design that translates well into the SH Figure Arts format, as this toy line already stylized the Avengers in a similar fashion. Now to be blunt, this toy is gorgeous. The slick metallic paint and intense surface sculpting combine to form a visual look that's equal parts aggressive and cool. I especially love how the phenomenal paint apps were even carried over to the joints of the toy. It's a detail that's seldom seen and one that keeps the overall appearance cohesive. Rarely do toys of this size come off as impressive looking as the SHF Mark 45. Mind you, there are a couple spots of notable distraction. The wrist joints are arguably the strangest sight. Unlike the previous Iron Man suits, the hand guards don't extend further back and cover a section of the wrist, so the joint gap only becomes that much more apparent. It's the sole area that breaks the illusion and constantly reminds me that this is indeed still a toy. The other issue involves the hand guards themselves. They're slightly oversized compared to the on-screen model, and at certain angles make Iron Man look like he's wearing mittens. Additionally, my copy suffered a scratched crotch, which is disappointing to say the least. Measuring in at 6 inches, the Mark 45 is no taller or shorter than the previous Mark 43 or Mark 6 figures, and quite obviously, it also scales perfectly with the other SH Figure Arts Avengers. For articulation, Iron Man's head is on a barbell joint, so there's actually a ball joint at the, at the top of the neck, and there's one in the head, and that gives him pretty good range, and he can just do like the back and forth movement without the neck. So that's pretty good. The neck itself has a secondary joint at the base to let it go down and up so he can get full upwards looking for flight poses, full downwards looking. Uh, the only weird thing is there's a bit of a gap in there. It's not too noticeable, so it's not the biggest deal in the world, but it is there. The torso is really interesting. There's no dedicated thigh swivel, but you do have a really nice mid torso movement ball joint. So it can move back and forth where you want. You can't really force it to go further than this though. Um, as you can tell, there's a little bit of cuts and seams so that you get a little bit of ab crunch going on. And what's cool is that in the back, you can see the joints and seams there too. So when you bend it, they also split and reveal a little bit of armor detailing. Now there is one thing I will have to point out. I have uh, heard reports that the interior gray skeleton has started to deteriorate on some examples. If you keep forcing this joint in too much, uh, I guess, rough movement or whatnot. I haven't had that problem, but then again, I've also read about it, so I've been particularly careful. Also with this toy, because of the nice paintwork, it is pretty easy to scratch it, so just uh, exercise caution when posing. When it comes to the arms, the shoulder pads are on a separate hinge, so these can, uh, I guess, flip upward just to get the arm to come out, and you can tell that's just an entire uh, ball hinge that moves in any direction you want. Uh, it is on a telescopic socket and that pulls all the way out to get a bit more range should you need it. You do have a bicep swivel, an awesomely joint, double jointed elbow with a bit of armor sliding underneath there going on. And then for the wrist, it's just a simple ball ball joint. Nothing very special going on here. The hips use the older SH Figure Arts pull down setup so you can pull the whole leg down and you can tell it's just on a ball joint that goes forwards, outwards. There is a built in thigh swivel that you can see just there. You do have double jointed knees. So these go pretty good. There is no um, collapsing armor panel, but it doesn't really need it on this figure. For the ankles, standard stuff. It is a hinge and a ball joint, so you get the ankle rockers that work pretty well. You do have a toe joint, but there's one thing I want to demonstrate before you use the toe joint. This armor flap actually moves upwards like that, so that when you bend his foot forwards you can, and his toe forwards, you can get a little bit more clearance there. Now, it is something that I recommend you always move up first before you attempt to move the foot just because if you if you move it by friction alone you will end up scratching this uh, area of the leg. Like the previous Iron Man releases, the Mark 45 possesses some of the best articulation you'll come across in the SH Figure Arts toy line. The abs section is a bit more limited than I prefer, yet all the poses I wanted were achievable. The accessories with the Mark 45 are nothing to write home about. For hands, you get fists, open palms, flight hands, and a pair with a peg in the palm for the repulsor effects. However, 
Unlike the previous Iron Man, you don't have to swap the handguard separately as each hand has one permanently affixed to it. It's a small yet very important detail. The only other set of items included are Iron Man's repulsor effects to be used with the already mentioned repulsor hands. If they look familiar, that's because they should. These are identical to the ones included with the Mark 43 and they function in the same way too. In fact, if I were to show you both plastic trays of accessories for both the 45 and the 43, I doubt you'd be able to tell them apart. The Iron Man toys have always demonstrated the full extent of what the SH Figure Arts team were capable of achieving within the limitations of the toy line, and their latest release, the Mark 45, might just be the very best one yet. As far as the core toy is concerned, it's an immaculate action figure and boasts incredible engineering that provides unrivaled articulation at this scale. But with SH Figure Arts Iron Man already carrying a high track record, everything I just said was entirely expected, if not guaranteed. Which leads me to the more important question, how is it as an overall package and is it worth 5800 yen? Well, to be brutally honest, it feels… dull. Between the reused effect parts and the minimal accessories overall, you get the sense that there could have been more. Actually, I would have loved the return of the swap out flight pieces as they were used on the Mark VI armor. Having said that, if you just adore the Mark 45 design, then you'll love this release, and the high quality paint scheme definitely fills out the price point. At the end of the day, this is a case of not fixing what isn't broken. SH Figure Arts Iron Man toys have always been great, and the Mark 45 is just another stellar example of that. But that's all for me. Thanks for watching, and prepare yourself, because the God of Thunder will soon arrive from Asgard.